stay tuned for a review and build of the AMT Ertl Star Trek USS Enterprise Command Bridge. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model builders and Star Trek fans. Are you ready to boldly go where no man has gone before on your model workbench? Well, if so, you don't want to miss getting one of these great USS Enterprise Command Bridges from AMT Ertl. Now this kit I have actually built back in the past. So toward the end of the video, I'll show you how my build turned out and how cool it is. I even did a little stop motion animation film, so you can check that out as well. But today we're going to be taking a look at this command bridge from AMT Ertl from 1991. This, I do think, in my own opinion, has the best artwork out of the three releases that have come out on the market since the original back in 1975. We'll take a little tiny peek at the 75 kit as well as the upgraded 2013 kit that comes with extra figures and improved decals as well as more panels for the bridge. But for today, we're actually going to take a time warp back to 1991 at the 25th anniversary of Star Trek as we take a look at this great command bridge. So before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. Also hit that thumbs up like button so that this video can go all the way out in the Google algorithm world and get more views to this channel. So without further ado, let's beam on down to the workbench where we get to take a look at the USS Enterprise Command Bridge from 1991. And now we return to another episode of Star Trek as we examine the bridge of the USS Enterprise model kit. Now before I really get into this, I want to give you all a bit of the history of this model kit. Uh, this one here is the 1991 25th anniversary re-release of this model kit. But before we get into opening the lid and all the rest of that that we normally do, I want to show you this bridge both past and present. So we're going to wind the clock back from 1991 all the way back to the first release of this kit in 1975. Here we have the original 1975 kit. And I do believe I got this one off my good friend Barry, another Star Trek fan. Uh, this, of course, is copyrighted right here at the bottom. <laughs> here, hold on. It, right in here, it says 1975 Paramount Pictures Corporation. So this kit came out in between the end of the original series and prior to Star Trek The Motion Picture. Right around the, the time of Star Trek The Animated Series. Actually, that was 73, so this is just a bit after that. But the popularity of Star Trek was growing in syndication. And that's when AMT decided to make more model kits in the series. So if we just tilt the box up on its side, and let all the parts fall down in there, it says these exciting AMT Star Trek kits and other space kits are available at your favorite hobby center. And this is where it got really exciting. I remember my dad had the Enterprise kit and it also had this on the side. So there it shows the bridge, the Romulan space vessel, which of course is also from 75, the Galileo shuttlecraft and the exploration set, uh, the Mr. Spock and the alien, and the ex uh, interplanetary UFO here, which is also known as the Leif Erikson. Now, I do believe that the bridge, the Romulan space vessel, uh, otherwise now known as the Bird of Prey, the USS Enterprise Exploration Set, the Shuttlecraft, and Mr. Spock. All of these came out in 1975. The Enterprise came out during the show's run, as did the Klingon Battle Cruiser. I think it's 66 and 67 for those two, and I'm unsure on the Leif Erikson. Another kit that came out in 75 would have been the 
the uh, K7 space station. Whoops. Oh, everything. All right, hopefully that's, that's done now. <laughs> Uh, what was cool about this is it gives you a whole um, rundown of what the command bridge does and then it gives you all the different stations as well as this top view and if you notice here there's red sections one two and three it says the red sections are not included in the kit and that was always sort of a fault with this kit the other thing about it is you do get Kirk and Spock and Sulu in this but sadly that's the only crew you got on the original Bridge of the Enterprise so for generations everybody wanted to get more figures because three was really not much it's sort of like the skeleton skeleton crew at midnight for the Enterprise the other problem with the original 1975 kit is it had a lot of really weird bridge decals. Unfortunately, the kit that Barry gave me didn't include them, uh, lost in time. But there's really weird stuff in there, like uh, asterisks and <laughs> funny little stars. The images are not quite correct for the screens. All kinds of weirdness. Um, I don't know if I can find a, an example of that on the web. Maybe I can. But anyway, it was quite strange. So now what I want to do is fast forward beyond the one we're going to review today from 1991 and take a look at the most current offering from AMT under the Round 2 banner. What you see here is the most recent edition of the Bridge set, which came out in 2013. And what AMT under Round 2 did was to add in extra figures there's actually 10 different characters to choose from. Um, now, three of those 10 are replacement heads, so there's actually seven bridge crew. And what they also did was add in the missing panels around here, although it's not shown in here because, of course, obviously all you'd see is just this big white <laughs> back of all the pieces and nothing exciting inside. However, like I said, if you tip the box on its side, Ah, as best I can. This is a long box, but it says all new figures, 10 different characters to choose from. So now turning the box onto the back is a wonderful image of the actual built model. And as you can see, you've got Spock, Uhura, Kirk, Chekhov, Sulu, McCoy, and then you've also what was added in, which was another thing that was missing, is Sulu's little uh, navigation targeting computer thing that raised up out of the the instrument panel here. And then you've also got Spock's little view screen down here. But unfortunately, another thing that's missing out of this <laughs> is Spock's TV set, which was up in here somewhere. But regardless, it is nice to have a refresh of this kit in 2013. And as you can see here, it's now got all the panels which was, of course, missing. I'll just bring this up to the camera for this image. Well, you can see how cool that is. But anyway, today we are actually unboxing the version from 1991 because I have a few for sale at the hobby shop. So let's take a look at that. And now we bring our chronometer back to 1991, where we get to check out the amazing USS Enterprise Command Bridge model kit. And now if we actually turn this up on its side, you can see some stills from the original series. Kirk and Spock having a talk here. <laughs> uh not too different on that end. Of course, there's all our different languages telling you what it's about. And on the end, it's much like the top of the box. So the artwork, I think, is quite nice on here. It gives you a pretty decent illustration of what's going on on the Enterprise Bridge. And now we can just take the lid off here. And you can see we get a 25th anniversary sticker 
just peel it off the backing here and you can mount this on a display base or on one of the panels on the outside of the bridge. Just sort of something nice to go with it. We have our instruction sheet which we'll look at in a minute with of course uh, Spock, Sulu and Kirk on it and tells you all about the adventures of the Enterprise. There's a decal sheet inside here which I'll show you toward the end of the video. And then we have all our pieces in a nice plastic bag. And of course this kit was opened, I guess, to be examined. And then here we have our view screens. Here's the debris in here. Now you get four of these panels. And of course they're on the sprue like that. But basically that's all our components for the bridge. There's a loose chair here. I can't reach it. <laughs> Anyway, I will clear this out of the way, and then we'll take a look at our instructions. In 1980, my dad built me a special playset that made me the envy of the neighborhood. And now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel base. Oh, snap! <laughs> It's getting a little too hot in this place. Chewy, we gotta get out of here. R2, bring down that elevator. Oh man. Chewy, see if you can get this thing started. Here we have our instruction sheet for the 1991 edition of the USS Enterprise Command Bridge with Figures model kit. And there's, uh, here's the 1990s AMT Ertl logo. So that I do believe is RC2. Okay, so as we open this up, we get this huge write-up about uh, the bridge of the Enterprise and everything that's going on with it. What I'll do is I'll type this out in the comment or the uh, description down below so that you can all read through it and see how cool that is. Now the instructions on this are fairly simplistic. So what I'll do is just zoom in and show you all the different pictures. Now step one in this is of course to start with the deck assembly. So as you can see, we do have uh, quite a lot of components in this big circle. So we've got our communications deck, the elevator deck, the engineering deck, environmental deck, main screen deck, main screen center, and then the main screen right. So this one's the left-hand side, of course. Our weapons control deck, uh, the assistant navigational deck, and our science deck. And then here we have the platform for our command chair, as well as the navigational console. And the steps, so three around the ring. Step two is our command station assembly. And here we have the top of the helm and navigational control panel going together with the base and the pedestal as a three-piece. There are some decals to put into these rectangles and the top of this has a bunch of little buttons and whatnot molded in place. We have the captain's chair which also has the tops of the chair molded in place, gluing onto the base and the other base. <laughs> this is a swivel mount actually for the chair, which unfortunately doesn't swivel, you just glue it in place. And then here we have the navigational control board, of course gluing in front, and the helm and navigation control panel is notched so that this will fit in the center. Step three, we have our station assembly, and it isn't quite fully complete with all the panels, but I do believe the idea is to duplicate these panels. Of course, there's four of them. So you paint them all the same, and then you look on the other page on the back of the instructions to find out where all the different decals go. But this is just the basics. So here you've got the panel right behind Kirk, which of course is the the communication station. And then we have our turbo elevator with the decals going on the side. Now one thing about this is it doesn't tell you what colors to paint in here. So you've got to reference that um, on your own through other channels. 
Panel 4 shows our other station assembly. Now this is going around after you've done all the little panels on Panel 3. Here we have our half panel, which is our weapons control panel. And then we've got a screen block out here, as well as the main viewing screen. And then of course it shows the decals which go in here. And it says C Floor Assembly Detail View B on the other side. So that'll tell you, of course, how this all goes together versus the floor. Panel 5, we have our figure assembly. We've got Captain Kirk's head and body, front and back, glue together, and then the arms glue in place. Uh, Mr. Spock is three pieces, so is Sulu. So we've got Spock's head going onto his body, and then there is a base down below. Same with Sulu. Uh, Sulu's back and body and head all go together. And again, there's our figures, but there are no painting instructions. So you're going to have to again source that somehow. And then our back panel here shows all the different decal placements for our other panels, as well as the uh, half section of the bridge. Actually, it's a little more than half, uh, but you get the idea. These are the railings you would add in along here. There's railing supports as well. Shows you how the chairs go together in their two pieces, the base and the top. And then it should say that the chairs and the figures, they're optional, location optional on the bridge. And again, you don't get as many chairs in this, but there are enough to go around, at least on that side of the wall, nothing for in front. Then if we just push our uh, instruction sheets up a little bit, this panel always kind of confuses me, but I do believe that if you look in from here, you know, on the front that's open, if you look in at this angle, you're going to see here or something. And if you look in here, you'll see this side. But I'm not fully sure what this was all about. View B, they call it, and view A. So I guess it all depends where your eye is looking. You're going to see, if you look, I guess if you look in on this side, you're going to see view A. And if you look here, you're going to see view B down here in this gray section. Uh, I'm not sure what they're talking about. But anyway, it says, note, reference box lid as a guide for painting. So you're basically supposed to take it off the lid. However, I do have some other sources. A wonderful book that came out in 1973, just two years prior to the model kit being built, was, of course, the Star Trek Starfleet Technical Manual, which was fully illustrated and written by Franz Joseph. Now, this book was the main staple of all Star Trek information back in the 70s, all the way into the 80s, and even up into the 90s. And then it kind of got out of favor. But at any rate... This is a very nice book, and inside it shows all kinds of great stuff. So I'm not going to go all the way through this book, uh, but I can show you some things that will help you with painting the Enterprise Bridge if you want to do it based on the Franz Joseph book. Now, first off, there is a uniform color code inside here. Now, they're not really talking about Star Trek uniforms, but they're just saying... These are the basic colors. This is pretty much the only colored cell in this entire book. So Franz Joseph uses these reference numbers, like 19 and whatever, in his uh, drawings, or he'll actually list them as the names. So silver, antimony, you know, this sort of thing. So someone could easily mix this up with, you know, testers, paints, or you know, some of the model master acrylics, or even um, Tamiya or Tamaya, depending on how you say that. You know, d different paints you could use for these colors. As we move through the book, we come across this top view of our main bridge. Now this is, of course, the Franz Joseph version. Uh, what he's showing here, because remember on the show, no one ever went to the bathroom. <laughs> so he's showing a toilet in behind that little sub wall. There is an access hatch somewhere in here on this side. Oh yeah, there it is. Which, of course, is not really shown on the show. Where crew members can go through here and then walk around 
the uh, perimeter of the um, command bridge in behind the panels in case you know Scotty has to fix something on one of them. I mean, it is it's a pretty um, interesting way that Franz Joseph kind of came up with some solutions to the problems of the original bridge of the Enterprise. There is supposed to be an escape hatch in here because as as you know on the show one of the problems is if Khan got on here and locked the elevator and then started to poison the bridge with gas or something crazy no one could get out. So Franz Joseph kind of came up with some ideas in ways that people can get out of here. <laughs> so anyway uh, getting beyond that if you look at the bottom here you can see that Franz Joseph included some official colors down here so this white square would be platinum so anything that's white here would be painted platinum uh, the little dots here represent red so he's got them on the handrails taupe is of course our carpeting material and then the black down here is going to be the black on the edges of the screens and the tops of the chairs and the command module and everything else Another thing that Franz Joseph gave us here was the main bridge on its side, of course. Uh, you can see the one view, so the turbo elevator on our left, and how it all looks from this end, including the dome, the stairs to get down, and then uh, looking at, I guess, from the turbo elevator going out this way, or from the front gangplank, I'm not quite too sure, but anyway. You can see the other side, including the view screen over here. So again, quite a lot of cool things. His uh, concept of how the bridge looks once you remove some of the outer skin. Here again we have a side and top view of the command module. So Franz Joseph actually went into more detail up here. Again, though, this is not quite accurate to the Paramount version, if you want to be a real stickler for that. This is more um, Franz Joseph uh, interpreting the images from Star Trek to make his own. So here we have our command chair. He also includes the eye view levels of, like, the captain. So if the captain is sitting here, he can see straight down onto the... Uh, helmsman. You can also see down here onto the controls which are here and if he I do believe stands up a bit he can also see from this angle or maybe moving up here behind Sulu or Chekhov he can see down onto the panels there. Uh, there we have our astrogator, helmsman's chair, navigator, ship's log and chronometer down here, the commanding officer's console and what's it saying there? The platform and all kinds of stuff. And again, there's our colors. Platinum, orange, taupe, gray, and black. So the orange is here on the sides of the uh, navigational thingy. Now the technical manual is full of different images. These ones, of course, are a split. So from front and of course where the captain sees and again it goes into some great detail about how the bridge is all laid out I didn't mean to say thingy here it's of course a console I just sort of ran out of thought process <laughs> sometimes that happens you know especially when you're getting in your 40s here late 40s anyway so there's again our colors and everything and if I just move over on this side, I'm not going to get into all these panels and everything, but this is Franz Joseph's uh, Helmsman station. And of course you can see all the different panels. Now I did actually watch the original Star Trek and tried to compare this with that, and they do not match. However, again, like I said, back in the 70s there was no internet, there was nothing. So we had either the show, which of course was running live and the Franz Joseph Tech Manual which was supposed to be the most accurate Star Trek thing that we knew of. So again it was really up to you on how you were building this. Now just to wrap up the technical manual I am going to show one of these because it does go through at least six of these different panels in the book. 
Here we have the Command Intelligence. So this is the main bridge station class one, for Class 1 starships. And as you can see, you've got the chair in the center. You've got the bridge ventilation down below. All the different computer displays in here. This would be a Spock station, I do believe. There's the viewer. Uh, Spock's little TV set sort of thing. And then up here you also have the visual intelligence display. And then if you look down here, this is the side panel. Here, I'll zoom in on this one, actually. There you go. So there's our side panels with, of course, our command chair. And as you can see, you've got the railing back here, your main bridge deck, your chair, the different colors for it. Uh, it also says this station is also duplicated on the emergency bridge. And it, it does give you, in the book, an emergency bridge in case the main bridge is being taken over by, I don't know, oh, let's just say Khan, because <laughs> that's all I can think of right now. So the main bridge is being taken over by Khan. Uh, the rest of the Enterprise crew could sneak down to the emergency bridge, or the emergency bridge could also be the battle bridge if something really heavy is going on and the main bridge got blown up by the Romulans or something. Um, so anyway, this command intelligence station is duplicated down there. But here's the side view. So you've got a 110 degree scanner up here. And then down here, it's at 90 degrees. There's circular arc back. There's a control console and the edge. It says it's at a 50% tile eye point. So if you're here, you can see down there. You can see, of course, in here and up there. So again, very uh, cool stuff done up by Franz Joseph. And now looking around the internet, I found this cool picture from Ex Astris Scientia which is a online Star Trek uh, sort of a website fan base thing. It has stuff from the original series and Next Generation and all that kind of stuff, as well as uh, items from books, magazines, comics, you name it, all to make up the Star Trek universe. Anyway, here is a color representation of our bridge. It also includes a turbo elevator back here, as you can see and our panels, a bunch of the crew members, the captain, and of course helmsman, uh, or navigation, par pardon me, and all the different stations back here, as well as some of the screens. So it gives you an idea of the coloration of the bridge. Also on the website is this awesome illustration of the bridge from the Christopher Pike era of Star Trek. And, of course, you could alter your 1991 Star Trek bridge model kit, or, of course, any of the bridge model kits, and backdate it to the Christopher Pike era. There's our turbo elevator in the back and the doors, which are pretty much universal to the 1991 kit, or the, of course, Kirk Enterprise. Let's, let's call it that. Uh, the only difference, of course, is you will need to figure out these little lamps which they had, which were sort of like view screens. There's, they're pretty much, uh, these things exist at every station, so you'll need to make a lot of those. You need to alter the chairs, of course, because they were a bit different. And the main difference, of course, is the lack of orange paint in here, which gives it a really steel, kind of cold metal look. But again, if you're trying to be accurate to the Christopher Pike era, that, of course, is all acceptable. And as you can see, the screen backs are quite different. If we take a look at that picture, there. You can see you've got two view screens up here on all these different panels, whereas here, in the old one, you'd have one main view screen, and then you've got these funny little things that flicked on and off, in and out, sort of like uh, one-quarter type view screens. Actually, this kind of reminds me of when I'm putting on the uh, the videos at the end on my end screens. And this is like the circular one for subscribe. <laughs> but anyway, kind of funny. Um, but there again is your Christopher Pike style command bridge. So now we'll look at our first components of the bridge, which of course are the panels. 
Now these are duplicated four times over. They're exactly the same. So really I could move these out of the way and we can focus in on our main panel. So as you can see, of course, we have our view screens in here. There is the sunken detail, which again has a nice border around it. There's all the little uh, view screens that are all along the side panels here. This area is flat because, of course, our decals would go on the top. And then we have our areas for the vents. And just turning these over... Oh, there is a bit of a difference, I forgot. There is a little piece that sticks out on one panel only. The rest of the panels do not have that piece. But overall, I mean, they're the same. I mean, look at that. Right. They do fit together quite well, edge to edge. You might have to sand this a little bit with some sandpaper just to uh, make it a little more level. You know, but overall they will work out quite nicely. Turning them over on the back, you can see, of course, part number. They are sunken in a bit, but overall not too bad. There is a flat spot down here, which this glues to our floors of the bridge. So overall, you know, for panels that are completely identical to each other, except for, of course, the one, this isn't too bad of a starting point. Now there are a lot of components on these parts trees, so we'll go through them basically two by two as best I can. So here, as you can see, we have a bunch of the floor panels, and these are nice because they actually have textured carpet molded in place. This, of course, is the front panel sitting beside the view screen. And here we have our turbo elevator and the alcove for it. There's another one of the floor panels. These are two of the steps. This is the swivel portion of the command chair. And here we have the one half panel, which makes up the circumference of the bridge. Now, if I turn this over, you, of course, can see the back panel wall. There are mold marks in here and numbers underneath, but because of how this is laid out, you won't see them in the front of the actual bridge looking in. The turbo elevators are basically just a flat piece of plastic with a groove down the center. Now, on the real bridge of the Enterprise, there is a little perimeter thing that goes around here, just so that it uh, makes the doors look more you know, uh, size to the figures. Um, I'll show you how that looks a little later in this video. But you can always make that portion up out of evergreen sheet styrene strips. So again, that's uh, quite an easy fix for the massive bridge doors. Now taking this one and carefully turning it over, because I don't know how much strength is going on in here, you of course can see the main view screen panel and it has a little squares that would often flash across in the TV series. There are mold marks, little circles in here, which of course you can uh, sand down, scrape out with your number 16 hobby blade. These ones here, I'm not sure if the floor panel comes up and actually covers them or partially covers them, but it's always a good idea to remove them as best you can. And of course, on the swivel part underneath, there is a number here, if you can see it, and four mold marks in the corner. So this is pretty easy to get at with a flat piece of sandpaper. You can easily go across and uh, get rid of it. So again, this is some very nice detail, considering, of course, it also comes from 1975. But again, it's a good representation and it gets the job done. Next up, we have more of the parts trees with our panels that make up the perimeter of the bridge. And here, of course, is our platform for the captain's chair and the helm. Again, really well done. I mean, for what they are. <laughs> they all line up and create a circle. Uh, and then, of course, underneath here, you've got the um, numbers for our parts. Again, the mold marks and whatnot don't really make too much of a difference on a lot of this kit because you're not going to see them there underneath. One thing of note here, 
you can see the copyright date, copyright 1979 slash 1990. So again, this is just showing that they have updated this, re-pop the mold, and away you go. And here is where our parts get really complex for this kit. Or, well, at least there's a lot of them anyway. Now, I've got the three parts trees here, as well as the loose chairs. And from what I can see, we get six chairs in this kit, um, as well as captain's chair to make up seven. So, there we go. As you can see here are our figures, their bodies. There's the arms for Captain Kirk, who's sitting down here. There's Sulu, who's standing with his arms crossed. And, of course, Mr. Spock. Now, I can never understand that pose of Mr. Sulu. Like, he's in protest. I guess Kirk said something to him. You know, the relationship between George Takei and William Shatner? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's part of the play into this thing. But Sulu's sitting there with his arms crossed, which doesn't seem very good for uh, a helmsman. You, of course, would be thinking that Sulu would be sitting down, same with Kirk. But for whatever reason, that's the way AMT decided it should go. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> they built it, dun-dun-dun-dun. Well, it was 75. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so there's the uh, base for the command chair. And our three railings as well as the uh, pieces for our stairs. And there's our steps. There's our heads for our characters. And the bases which they're going to stand on. Here's a final panel piece, as well as two steps. And our captain's chair. These, of course, are the chairs for the rest of the crew. These are the railing posts. The other chairs, of course, are chair bases with this nice railway crossing underneath. Uh, there's the helms area and the helm uh, consoles. So let's just... Here, I'm going to take a look at that helm con console first because it's barely on there on our parts tree. So if it's going to fall off. I don't want it to fall off. There we go. Okay. So as you can see here, you've got all the buttons and controls. And again, the AMT kit is not accurate to the TV show, nor is it accurate to the Franz Joseph Tech Manual. In fact, if you drew a line straight down the center here, you would notice that this is the mirror image of this. So that, of course, is not correct for the actual ship. But, I mean, it is nice that they give you all the little buttons and everything. And, of course, there's for our astrogator. And, as you can see again, there's molded on button detail and whatnot. This is actually not too bad to the show. But, anyway. Um, all these railing uh, brackets are flat. And, of course, everything is actually flat and smooth. It's just really those two components that have the detail. There is one thing to note about the old Star Trek philosophy as far as AMT went. And that philosophy was, if it looked right, it was right. Even if it's wrong. <laughs> so they were kind of into just making the kits so that they were out and put to market, basically. And looked pretty accurate so that uh, the model builders, which were usually kids at that time that liked the show, could kind of play with this stuff, and it would be good enough for kids. They never had that serious intention like more modern models, where, you know, it has to be accurate down to the every single detail and perfect in every way, shape, and form. So again, even the figures are kind of a little chunky and weird, like the boots are not quite boot-looking enough. Uh, these problems were addressed, of course, in the kit from 2013, but for 1975, like I said, if it looked right, it was right. It was good enough. The actual heads on here are, are done pretty nicely. I mean, it does look like Shatner, Nimoy, and Takei. Takei. I always get that a little bit messed up. But anyway, um, they do look very nice. And when you paint them up, they, of course, look even better. Again, like I said, there's no mold marks. AMT did get this kit right as far as from a uh, production point of view. 
because there's no mold marks like there you know sitting anywhere where you can see them except for maybe like in some areas where they couldn't get away from it like the top of these bases of course they could have molded this the other way around um, there are some on the back of the stair brackets underneath the steps you know like it, you can't really shoot for perfection with mold marks but again a lot of them are not in visible locations so i'll give amt um, a good one for that then of course here's our final piece and again the command chair has the buttons and controls on the top which again are not quite accurate but at least it's nice that they're there uh, the chairs they're all pretty much the same there is a one big powerful mold mark in the back which again you could sand out it's got an easy way to get there numbers might interfere with where the peg goes for the chair so again those get sanded off but overall I mean the shape is okay oh one thing on the show there is sort of a bit of a loop in here this is painted a different color up top something like that as far as I remember so again these chairs were not quite accurate but again like I said if it looked right it was right according to AMT back in the 70s because again there was a big massive demand for this like everybody wanted Star Trek models so in order to meet production and speed and whatnot certain corners were cut but overall like I said it looked accurate so there's our components the uh, final gray ones so now we'll move on to a next little bit here now if you watched any of my other model kit reviews you know that I don't really get much chance to actually build anything and I get a lot of people asking me when I'm gonna build something or whatnot so today you're kind of in luck because I do have a few of these bridge model kits. This one was one that was sort of built as a glue bomb, I guess, by somebody. And I actually took it apart and started to reconstruct it. So as you can see, these are the floor panels and they do all join up to make a nice ring. This would be, of course, our front view screen. There's our platform for the captain's chair and the helm navigation as well as our turbo elevator, which is off on this angle, which is correct to the show. Now, one thing you'll notice here is there is no floor inside our donut. And whoever built this uh, before made this floor out of, um, this is the foam core board. Not quite the best as the foam core did crunch up, but you could easily make, um, something using evergreen sheet styrene which would be a lot better underneath uh, if you can get a big enough sheet of it but basically there it is or uh, if you're mounting this to a board of wood you of course could put a little thin piece of carpet material in there much like like this gray cloth I've got for example uh, glue that down, glue this over top on your wooden base. And that would give you a nice uh, detail in here, which would be accurate to, of course, the show. Now remember that your stairs are coming down. Now where do they come down? They come down here. No, the railing is there, the stairs are here. That's right. And again, as you can see, I've masked off a bunch of areas, painted inside with the flat black, just like it would be on the show. And of course, our elevator pad back here would be flat black as well. As you can see here, I'm in the process of actually painting these panels. I do believe I gave up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh. so as you can see, here's the panels in the process of painting. Now, what I've done is I've painted these with a color from Tremclad, which is a spray paint. Um, what this color is called is light gray and to me it pretty much matches the gray of the enterprise you know as best i can it is a gloss color so it is pretty shiny inside here this gray is actually gray primer and of course i'm going to have to clean up the edges here cuz my masking tape was didn't quite peel off as nice uh, now, as you can see, there is a bit of marks under here and some craters 
that's because this kit was glued together and I actually was able to break it all apart off of the uh, the ring the platform there break up the platform and actually glue it all back together and you know make it nice what I'll need to do is paint these panels in here with the gloss black which is going to be sort of interesting to do uh, yeah there's quite a lot of work going on with this I did get rid of the mold marks in the screen so that the decal could sit down there nicely as well as down here so when it meets up with the panel it would look right but anyway this is these are the pains I'm going through to get these panels you know for panels that are quite simple this kit actually requires a lot of masking in tricky areas and all kinds of stuff just to get it right however these panels are flat so you could put a piece of masking tape right over the top here and then mask inside here and here and then spray bomb all this flat black or gloss black with the trim clad gloss black it's just going to be for me this part will be tricky because these three panels are glued together so i actually have to mask it in here and cover this completely uh, and carry on so it's going to be quite interesting now if you want to get technical our panels will fit in like this so there's our screen going in as well as these other panels I can't go too far around here <laughs> well let's go about there okay you get the general idea so these are how the panels are gonna fit in place and what I found actually is a good idea on this kit just because of the way the panels are is if you look on the side here there's a lot of height and quite a fair bit of plastic meat as you might call it so what I did on one of the bridges that I built is I put the panels in and I put in some I guess they're self tapping screws and I screwed it in there and there and around on every panel and that way um, not only does it tighten these in along the floor here whoops you could also arrange it so that like maybe not on this bridge from the 70s because it only went you know around the one side and this side was exposed but on the 2013 bridge where you actually have the panels coming around this side you could screw the panels in down below and potentially I don't know how good it would work uh, you could put another screw going this way on these panels actually uh, nut and bolts would be better because then you can always drill a hole straight through and then a nut and a bolt uh, so that you're not you know screwing and then unscrewing and screwing in and then eventually where it's threaded in the plastic tears through and becomes just a you know you might as well drill that through and then use uh, like Meccano size screws nuts and screws in there a lot of you guys won't know what that means Meccano anyway um, look it up Google Meccano <laughs> Meccano sets were uh, metal toys that were held together with screws and bolts or nuts and bolts so you put your nuts and bolts through there and then down in here as well and you could actually undo those panels on either any of the sides from any of the points so you can see everywhere around your bridge and here we have our captain's chair as well as our helm and navigation station now I haven't painted this with the uh, trim clad light gray yet but I did with the captain's chair now unfortunately like I said this was somebody else's model kit that was pretty glue bombed together and one thing that's really unfortunate about it is everything is okay except the command console here or the the helm navigation console because this is actually sitting at an angle it's sitting up like this I know that's a little harsh on the stick there but you can see it a lot better when it's on the base and it just irritates me because the problem is 
there's so much glue in here <laughs> that there's no way to break this console thing out without seriously damaging the rest of this. So I just kind of painted it gray and <laughs> hope for the best that nobody can actually see that that thing is out of alignment. But I know it, you guys now know it, and it's irritating. <laughs> but anyway, overall, it does glue up nice and looks good. So what I'll do is I will show you the decal sheet next, which is really cool. And then after that, I'll show you my built-up version of the bridge. And here we are with our bridge decal sheet. And this was always the most exciting decal sheet probably out there ever. <laughs> you can see all the different com uh, consoles and view screens. And there's the main viewer. They're orbiting the planet, of course. There's all our little bar graph readouts. And the actual side view and top view of the Enterprise. These are all the little consoles that go along in the um, computer areas on each of our panels. There's all our controls and our vents. And of course the ship dedication plaque right here uh, saying that it's the Enterprise made in the San Francisco dockyards. All the little panels and the lights and everything. Always love this uh, decal sheet. Very nicely done. Well, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about the review. So now let's go down and see how I actually built this kit. And I'll show you in photographs how I modified the turbo elevator doors so that they look more accurate to the show and uh, how I painted the figures and everything else. So now, without further ado, let's check that out. Approaching the planet now. Excellent, Mr. Sulu. Maintain standard orbit, Mr. Chekhov. Aye, aye, Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock, you and Sulu take the shuttlecraft to the planet. Try not to be discovered. Yes, Jim. And that completes our look at our 1991 edition of the Star Trek USS Enterprise Command Bridge. And if you've built this model kit in the past, I would really love to see how you built it over on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Did you build it right out of the box? Or did you add in a bunch of the aftermarket components to uh, accurize this kit, I guess you'd call it. Some of them include uh, lighted panels in the back, um, I've got uh, some photo etch stuff you can add in there. I can order it, is what I'm trying to say. I've actually found it from my wholesalers. They're little uh, photo etch panels where you can paint in the details and whatnot. Have you built the latest edition? 
or have you actually built the original 1975 edition of this kit? Let me know in the comments down below, share pictures on Facebook, and all that other fun stuff. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it, We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. <laughs>